Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today, let me tell you, we are getting real. We are getting so real about being horny and how to get horny, how to get yourself turned on, how to get in the mood, how to feel all those feel good feelings so that you're ready to be sexual, whether that's sexual with yourself or with another person. So if you wanna know, how to get in the mood and how to do it super quickly and effectively, make sure you keep on watching. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. One of the number one things we get wrong when it comes to this idea of being aroused, being horny, being turned on, is that it's the same for everyone, that it's supposed to work in the exact same way for all of us. But actually, we know from research that this simply is not the case. Unfortunately, it's not very acknowledged. It's not something that's really talked about. So I wanna talk about it today to help put a lot of the female viewers at ease and maybe even some of your partners as well who might be watching on. Now, it's probably not gonna come as a surprise to any of you that the way arousal occurs for men is essentially in a reactionary manner. And that means that if a man, a heterosexual man, has a naked, attractive woman in front of him, then chances are extremely high that he is gonna be ready to go. He's gonna be turned on and he's gonna be ready to get down to business. Now, this is rarely the case for women. Arousal is actually something that occurs not reactively for women, but contextually. And what that means is that all of the circumstances that are happening in that particular moment matter. So things like if a woman is comfortable, is the temperature too hot or too cold? Those things can affect a woman's ability to get turned on. Things like if she's stressed because she had a hard day at work, she's currently having an argument with a friend, maybe even because her boyfriend or girlfriend or partner didn't take the trash out this morning like she asked them to and it's still playing on her mind and she's still kind of annoyed about it. All of those things affect a woman's ability to get turned on, whether or not she feels comfortable and confident in her body or she's worried about the way her body looks. And this is why we can often find that a couple can have a really bad argument, like a really terrible argument. And afterwards, if the woman gets naked, the male partner is still pretty happy to have sex, but the female partner often will be like, hell no, I'm not having sex with you. I'm still pissed off. Because when we have any kind of other things going on in our head, it's really difficult, if not impossible for most women to actually have that arousal be triggered. And that's why often I talk about this concept of arousal for women actually being something that happens in the 24 hours before sex, not what happens right before sex in those first few minutes when you're taking your clothes off. That's too late for a woman. All the things that happened in the lead up in the day, whether or not she had an argument with someone, whether or not she feels sexy and beautiful or she feels gross, all of those things are gonna matter. So knowing this, we can actually then do some things, we can tweak some things in the environment to make it so that arousal is a lot easier for you as a woman to experience or if you are the partner of a woman watching this, you can get some hacks on how to make it more likely that she's gonna be turned on so you're more likely to have sex. But girls, please just remember, you can also just get turned on for your good old self. You don't need a partner for this. You can just get yourself in the mood and then have a good old session with your vibrator. So let's get into some of the little hacks that you can use to get super turned on super quickly. Temperature is so important for women and it's often really underestimated. I know personally, I've been in the middle of having sex with someone and I, they've thrown the blanket off me on a cold night in order to like straddle over me or whatever. And I've had to actually stop the sex and say like, I need you to put the blanket back on me because I'm cold and I can't actually just like concentrate and enjoy the sex because I was worried about being cold. Now, a really good tip if you're gonna be having sex and it's a cooler you know, time of year is that you put socks on and you keep your socks on as a woman. Also, make sure the 
room is nice and warm. Make sure that you feel nice and comfortable and warm. Have a shower so your body is like nice and warm and heated up and you feel really good. Temperature is a big deal. Likewise, if you're boiling hot because it's a super hot summer's day, do things to cool yourself down. Make sure the room is cool. Put on a fan or stand in front of the fridge for a little bit. Go for a swim. Do whatever it is you need to do to cool down because if you are overheated or you are freezing, it's going to be really, really difficult for your body to actually experience arousal. So if you know that temperature is going to make a difference, then just make sure that the temperature of the room that you are in when you're either having sex with a partner or you're having sex with your good old self is a comfortable temperature. If you have ever felt stressed, you know what happens to your body when you're in that state. Things get really tense and often for a lot of people, what will happen is their neck and shoulders will get really tight and it just feels like you can hardly move. I've honestly gotten myself so stressed in the past. I went through a period where I couldn't even like properly turn my head to the side, like my neck fully locked up just from the stress. And anyone who's ever been stressed, which I'm going to assume is probably everyone watching, knows just how tense and tight your body gets. Now, keeping that in mind, you can then maybe understand that your muscles in your neck and back aren't the only things that are getting tense and firm and hard and tight when you are getting that stress. Also, your muscles in your vagina are also getting tight and not the good, sexy kind of tight, the uncomfortable kind of tight, the kind of tight that's going to make it really unpleasant for you to be penetrated, whether that's penetrating yourself with a vibrator or having a partner penetrate you with their fingers or a penis that is going to hurt because those muscles are going to be tense. You never want to be doing anything to the vagina when the vaginal muscles are tense. So if you are stressed because you've just been having a stressful few days at work or maybe you're just you know you're just feeling a bit you know run down you've got a lot going on in your life whatever it is you want to do some things to help your body relax so that your muscles relax in your body including the muscles in your vagina and one of the best ways to do that and this has been backed by research is to dim the lighting research has actually proven that dim lighting helps to naturally put the body in a more relaxed state and this is why often for like romantic dinners and when you see like romantic scenes in movies they'll have lots of candles lit because candlelight is a really calming relaxing type of light so if you want to get yourself in the mood for some masturbation or if you want to get in the mood for your partner or maybe you're a guy watching this and just wants to get your female partner nice and horny turn off the lights get a bunch of candles out and light them obviously be safe we don't want to burn the house down doing this if you have a partner get your partner to give you a massage a massage is going to relax you and you can even get them to massage you with a sexy massage oil i actually like this baby from astroglide it's called O personal lubricant and massage oil and exactly as the name suggests it's a massage oil that doubles as a personal lubricant so this is like the perfect game changer for getting super horny. Have your partner rub this into your shoulders and wait until you're feeling really relaxed and then have them start to run it down your back and go in between your butt cheeks and then down underneath your vulva and onto your clitoris. Now, the only thing that you do need to keep in mind is oil-based lubricants like this baby are not compatible with condoms. So if you are having sex with a condom, you should not be using an oil-based lubricant. In that case, just reach for a regular water-based lubricant. But if you are having sex without a condom, maybe if it's a long-term partner that you don't use condoms with, this is amazing because you can have that sexy, relaxing massage, and then you can just use this on your vulva as well and have it put on your clit and get super in the mood. Speaking of lubricant, this has to be hands down one of the most underrated things when it comes to female arousal. I hear from women all the time that struggle with this. Now, there is this real kind of myth out there that when a woman gets turned on, she gets really wet. And while that is something that does 
happen naturally to women's bodies. It definitely doesn't happen all the time and it can be impacted by lots of different things. So you can actually feel turned on but not be wet simply because you're on a certain type of medication. Things like the birth control pill and antidepressants can actually affect your ability to get lubricated. If you're older and you're going through menopause as a woman, that can also impact your ability to get lubricated if you've been recently ill or stressed. Sometimes even your diet can impact your ability to get lubricated. So you can be horny and still be dry. And if you're dry and you try to touch yourself or have a partner touch you, it's not gonna feel comfortable and you're actually quickly gonna become unhorny. You're just gonna get turned off because it's not gonna feel good. Now, the reverse is also true. If you are not feeling horny at all and you put a little bit of personal lubricant on your clit, just get that area wet, you will find that you can very quickly get very turned on and in the mood. In fact, usually when I masturbate, I don't feel horny at all. Like I will go to masturbate and I'm not turned on and I will put just a few drops of personal lubricant on my clit, rub it around on there every time, let me tell you. Super horny, super quickly. Lube makes it comfortable for you to touch yourself so that it can be pleasurable. It heightens your sensitivity, but also just that feeling of the coolness of the lube touching your clitoris can be such a turn on because it just heightens all of those sensations. So the lube I often use is Toy Enjoy. This is another Astroglide baby. The reason you wanna use a lube like this that is actually formulated for sex toys and not just any old lube is because what happens if you're not using a lubricant that has been actually formulated with the correct ingredients to be used with a sex toy, then a lot of lubricants can actually degrade and break down the silicon on sex toys over time. So it's gonna shorten the lifespan of your vibrator or your sex toy. If you're just masturbating without a toy or having sex with your partner and they just wanna put a little bit on your clit to make it more comfortable, then I definitely recommend just using a standard silicon based lube, something like this baby. I also like this one because it is in rainbow packaging for pride because June is Pride Month, so that's very cool. And I really like this one too because it's really long lasting. So a lot of lube tends to dry up fairly quickly after use and you have to keep applying more, which can kind of interrupt your flow of like getting horny and getting turned on. Whereas I find with this particular lube, I don't really know what they've done to make it like this, but when you put it on, it just lasts like a really long time. I. I don't think I've ever had to reapply it during like a session of using it. I usually just put it on once and it lasts the whole time. For women, probably the biggest kind of key to unlocking our ability to get aroused and to get turned on and something which you've hopefully noticed is a theme through all of the tips I've given throughout this video is our minds. There is actually an author called Naomi Wolf. She wrote a book called Vagina and she actually talks about something she refers to as the brain vagina loop. And the reason she calls it the brain vagina loop is because they actually found through research that for women, the brain and the vagina are pretty much interconnected. That means if a woman's brain is not in the game, her vagina won't get in the game. So if you don't feel sexy, if you don't feel relaxed, if you don't feel good in yourself, your vagina is not going to be getting into gear and allowing you to get those really great aroused feelings. And likewise, if your vagina doesn't feel good, you will start to have that kind of stressed feeling in your mind. And when you feel stressed in your mind, your vagina will start feeling even worse. So the two are interconnected. That's why it's really important if you are having sex on your own or sex with a partner that you actually get your mind into gear. So think sexy thoughts, really think about something that turns you on. If it's something, you know, if you're having sex with a partner, focus on the things about them that drive you crazy, some particular part of their body or the way they're moving or the way they're moaning. And if you're having sex on your own, either imagine something really sexy, like a really sexy fantasy you've got, or just watch something really sexy. That is what porn is for. I'm a big advocate of using porn to help yourself get in the mood. You don't need to use porn every time you masturbate. 
but even if you just use it every so often, if you're feeling like you're struggling to get horny, just watch something super hot and sexy. You can find anything on porn. So whatever it is that your fantasy is, I am confident you will find it on porn. And then just watch that to get yourself in the mood because once your mind is thinking those sexy thoughts, your vagina is going to follow and you will start to have those turned on feelings. That's when you wanna work in the lube and really focus on your clitoris because for most women, that's how most women are able to get super aroused and to actually orgasm is via the clitoris because there are so many nerve endings down there, around 8,000 of them in fact. So definitely pay some attention to your clitoris, get your mind into gear, make sure the environment is relaxing and you are going to find that it is a lot easier to experience arousal, to get turned on, to get horny, and to get yourself in the mood. But if you have some other tips and tricks on things that have worked for you for getting horny and in the mood, then please, by all means, share them in the comment section down below. Let's all help each other out with our tips on getting horny. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then give this video a thumbs up so I know you want more of this content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Mwah.